He's up. <clears throat> I almost missed it there. Sorry. Uh, good day. Good old Lanner County Confidential. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Lynch Staunton. And uh, here, here we go here. Um, this is episode seven, brought to you on WRVO uh, Radio Network from Vito Violet Outdoors. Um, today's episode was entitled um, From the Sugar Shock, but uh, the DVR that I was using to record it, just I can't get a high enough output level on it for it to record high enough on this. So or I uploaded it. Well, the first one I uploaded, it was too big a file. So uh, I did another one, and it's just I can't get a high output level. So I have to figure a different way of doing it. And now, now I have an interview that I just did uh, uh, with Jonathan Carter that I'm going to post as well, too, hopefully later tonight or tomorrow um that uh we'll see how that comes out i'm hoping i can figure it out by the time i gotta do that one but anyways uh today's uh podcast or today's episode is going to be uh about ladder county uh the uniqueness that it is at this time of year uh because of uh, it being the maple syrup capital of ontario uh, there's a lot of maple syrup production. There's a lot of sap taken out of trees at this time of year, and a lot of boiling. There's a <clears throat> there's a lot of moisture in the air around Lanark County at this time of year, um, and it's a pretty special place, uh, I think, because of the maple syrup production. Uh, one of one of Canada's traditions, I would uh, I would say. Um, dating back who knows how long uh the indians obviously so probably probably a good ten thousand years in this area well after the ice age and uh that would have been ten thousand years anyway so uh i know the uh indians were um using hollowed out logs and and they take birch bark and they put the sap in they collect the sap in the birch bark and uh then they uh throw hot they throw rocks in the fire heat them up real hot and throw them into the the these bowls of birch bark or of uh, or the logs and they would boil the sap down in in that respect uh and then they would use it and they would keep it for uh, for certain things because it would it would stay for a period of time but um being that they didn't have fridges and cold storage you know <clears throat> it would get consumed but um still it was it was something that they used uh, over the winter time and stuff uh, and in the, to to maintain themselves so um sort of like a medicine or a sovereign ointment or whatever it's it, there's a lot of uses that they find these days for it and you can tell that just by going to some of the uh the sugar uh the maple produ- uh, the, the the producers of maple syrup and their products uh you know the pancakes pancake <coughs> excuse me the pancake houses i have some hot chocolate here the pancake houses and the sugar camps um thank you nice hot chocolate so uh uh when i first started getting into maple syrup and i i've been doing it for about well we've been here 10 years now and uh so i've been doing it for probably nine years now and uh got into it because my uh well because we have some a bunch of maple trees on our property the sugar maples obviously uh the farm that we bought they were doing it um you know 70 80 100 years ago obviously when they first came here because they have their own little sugar sh- shack that they made or they what it is is a shack that they've they did uh, they pressed their apples in for for apple cider or apple juice um they boiled their sap they also did some carpentry stuff in there and they did from the looks from the looks of it they did some blacksmithing stuff as well too so it's a pretty interesting little little uh, building it's an outbuilding obviously um that's what they call them so but uh there's a few uh, in land well actually there's more than a few probably about 20 producing uh, areas or 20 little farms that produce maple syrup um and it's pretty unique, like I say, uh, if you go around to these places. One of the places that helped me when I was first starting off was Wheeler's. Uh, they're in McDonald's Corners in, uh, in Lanark. 
and you can find them on the internet or give them a call on I think their let's see their phone numbers here is six one three two seven eight two zero nine zero so or you can find them on the internet under Wheeler's Maple products or uh, Wheeler's Maple type thing so um, and they've got it's pretty much traditional way of uh, doing maple syrup uh, they have the outbuildings and stuff and and some pretty neat displays and uh, uh, but before we I was doing it myself. Um, my girlfriend and I were always buying them from, uh, they were buying it from Fulton's at that point. And they're another producer in Lanark as well, too. Uh, they're, uh, let's see where they are there. I think they're in Pakenham. Yeah, they must be in Pakenham. And they've got the full line of everything as well, too. So um, they've got um, uh, products. Yeah, they're in Pakenham on uh, Concession, Concession Road, uh Concession Road, Six Concession Road. So, anyways, you can find all these people on the internet. And Fulton's, they 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 have the full line. They do the pancake breakfast, and and uh, but they also have uh, of um, other things as well. They have some corporate um, workshops and educational workshops and stuff like that. And they also have a bunch of products, uh, um, health products or body products made from um, maple syrup or so it's it's pretty unique so um but anyways getting back to making maple syrup uh it's one of the things that it's very time consuming um and being that it is very time consuming um it's pretty it's fun because uh you go out you find the trees uh figure out how many taps you can put on the trees tap the trees come back a couple of days later empty the buckets bring them back, put them in a big bucket, boil all that down until you can get it into a smaller bucket that you can finish it inside and throw it in a smaller bucket and boil that down. And uh, it uh, turns into some really, really nice syrupy uh, elixir um, that you throw in your pancakes. And if you get a really good uh, recipe for pancakes, and uh, if you guys want a good recipe, I'll, I guess I'll finally share this with, I have to, it's going out with my stepdaughter, so I guess I can share this. Well, this st- recipe came from a magazine article years ago, but if, if people are looking for a good recipe for um, uh, for pancakes, uh, hit me up on Facebook there. Uh, go to Facebook, Lanark County Confidential, like uh, the page, and then say, hey, I want your, f- I want your pancake recipe. Um, and... Uh, I'll probably post it or I'll send you a message with it or something like that. These are really, really good pancakes, by the way. Uh, they're the fluffiest I've ever had. Uh, I've never had anybody say anything bad about them. In fact, most people r- would like to eat as many as they can, but um, <clears throat> they're kind of filling. So, but And that's what you need for really, really good uh, maple syrup is really, really good pancakes or uh, even, you know, ice cream vanilla ice cream <laughs> i've been having this is my desserts lately some vanilla ice cream uh some homemade chocolate syrup that i make as well too and a couple of chippets uh and just mm, just the maple syrup drizzled all over it. it's it's making me hungry right now anyways but anyways so um benefits of maple syrup and that's one of the other things that uh, i'd like to get into is uh, is the the maple syrup has uh, organics in it. And these organics mean that it has minerals in it. It has vitamins in it. It has a thing called thiamine. Uh, it has iron. It has calcium. Um, it has uh, uh, um, acids in it, which are good for you. Uh, it has, um, you know, all sorts of um, stuff that builds solid trees. So uh, it, <clears throat> nothing in maple syrup is going to harm you is what i'm saying uh the sugars are good sugars that are um, uh, that are transformed into energy uh easily um your body doesn't have to work to to utilize the energy the calories that it gets from from maple syrup Uh, there is no fat in maple syrup there is very low sodium in maple syrup. So if you're worried about it from an aspect of fat, 
you don't really have to. That's not something that, of an issue that you're going to get. So if you look at it from the aspect of, of are there health benefits? Yes, there are. Is it expensive? Yeah, it's probably three times the cost of, uh, of your normal syrup, but uh, I think you're going to get a lot more out of it than, well, it was $20 the other day, $20 a liter. So um, hopefully when I'm finished, uh, my first batch the other day, I boiled off a liter and a half. This one that's going out right now, I'm going to have to go out to it quickly because, uh, well, this is the fourth show. This is the fourth one that I've done. So the first two, uh, like I said, were done on the DVR, didn't work out. The third one was interrupted by um, the fact that I don't have a soundproof studio. <laughs> And then I found out that uh, I got, wanted to do this interview with uh, with a guy from Bassmasters, Jonathan Carter from Bassmasters. <coughs> he was also a gambler sponsored uh, uh, pro. Well, he's a, 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 a tournament angler, um, the Bassmasters angler. Um, I found out that I could interview him tonight, so I gave him a quick call there. That's why I'm going to be a bit late on this, but. Um, so just from the aspect of, of, uh, everything involved, if you thinking of, um, uh, getting into making your own maple syrup, I mean, all you need is about four or five half decent trees on your property. Uh, as long as they're big enough size and diameter, some of them you can t put two buckets on. If you can fill a bucket in a day or you can fill two buckets in a day, if you have four or five trees that you can fill two buckets in a day, uh, you're going to have enough there. Basically, you know, you want to start off with about 40 to 80 liters to start boiling off to begin with anyways. Um, 40 liters should give you about a liter worth of syrup. That's about the, usually the ratio, depending on the, the sugar content of the sap. Uh, the higher the sugar content, obviously, the more, the less you have to boil off, the more syrup you're going to get. So, but typically they look at it about a 40 to one ratio. Um, I've got a pot out there that's about probably about a hundred liters and I put about 80 liters in at a time and I boil that off. And I, like I said, I got about a liter and a half. Well, I probably boiled off about 60 liters the last time. So, but, um, so, but like I say, and then, uh, depending on how you boil it, you can get it darker or a bit lighter. So, uh, too much heat will make it a bit darker. I found by mistake, um, and then too much heat when you're finishing it can just ruin it real, real fast, real quick. So uh, the finishing part is sort of, it's not an art, but there's a technique to it uh, with a wooden spoon and this thing called cutting and stuff like that. Basically, it's it has to congeal a certain amount as it drips off your spoon. And if it doesn't congeal uh, soon enough, then it's not ready. If it, conge you know, if it congeals too much, then what will happen is it'll tend to sugar in the bottle unless it's kept frozen for a long time but even still over time it will no matter what turn the sugars i think soon enough if it's processed to a certain point so um but i mean it's fun it's uh kids learn a lot and if uh you're not doing anything this easter weekend <clears throat> i strongly suggest you take them out to you know, either Wheelers or Fultons or something like that, or one of the other ones in Lanark County. Um, there's many of them, like I say. And um, they'll get a good experience because they'll see, um, number one, what it takes just to make something that they see in a bottle that they probably don't think too much about. Um, I know as a kid, I, uh, I always like to see how things were made and, and, you know, how they came apart and stuff like that. That's one of the reasons I became a mechanic because I started taking things apart uh, because it's just that general curiosity. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a neat thing to be out in the in the woods at this time of year. Everything's starting to, you know, come out of its dormancy from the winter time and, and come alive. And so there's a lot of more birds at this time of year. Uh, uh, you know, you see, I know when uh, we take the, I take the dogs for the walk this time of year, um, I get more, I see more tracks because of the thawing of the snow and stuff. And, and then you'll get a day where you'll just be a light sprinkling of snow. So, uh, the, the last week I've been seeing this, these, uh, consistently for about the last three weeks, these two big turkeys have been wandering through. Um, and Tara, actually my husky, uh, who's a very good turkey smelling dog. 
uh, has sent it them a couple of times. In fact, uh, about, well, just last week I had to call her off. Uh, she she smelt. I saw the tracks. Uh, she smelt them, and she was off over the fence after one of them. He flew up into the tree, and I saw the other one is sitting in the tree already. So, uh, being in Lanark County, I mean, that's probably with 50 acres. Uh, that's probably well, we we got deer here going coming through here constantly. Uh, coyotes. Uh, I'll go out tonight as I'm boiling sap and. And uh, I'll see, I'll hear coyotes anywhere starting from about 10 o'clock at night till, you know, 2, 3 o'clock. And I sub, I, even earlier, sometimes I've heard them at 8 o'clock at night and stuff. So uh, it's uh, it's just something you expect living in Kalanar County. So, But it's it's what makes this, like I say, it makes it unique. It makes it interesting. Um, just being that close to nature, uh, sometimes it's a bit unnerving, but <laughs> what can I say? So... Uh, it's it's part of the uniqueness uh, of living in the country. The other thing is, uh, you know, you get the ability to, uh, or the access to a lot of the lakes that are close by. Uh, and speaking of that, um, was got out to do a couple more, uh, well, actually a day and a half of, of uh, crappy fishing. And... Uh, um, got a chance to go up to Newboro again. Did yeah, did reasonably well. Um, hit uh, Mississippi for half a day and did actually very well on Mississippi. Uh, well, considering what Mississippi is like and how it gets pounded and stuff and it's for the size. But uh, Newboro was a couple of fourteen, well, a few more than a couple of fourteen inches. There was a there was a few big fish. A lot. I shouldn't say a few big fish. There was the majority of them were probably bigger. There wasn't a lot. Of, I should. What I'm trying to get across is. There wasn't a lot of fish, but the fish that I caught, the crappies that I caught were big crappies anyways. They were going towards the 13, 14 inch range. Actually, I don't think I caught anything under 12 inches that day. So, um, But I I found them actually in uh, in a weed bed. Um, it was funny because I didn't think that I was catching some bluegills and then boom, I started catching crappies. And it just went on for a couple hours. Um, and then that was it. I guess they I they moved. I couldn't find which way they moved. Plus, I had to go as well, too. So it didn't. Uh, but uh, with the ice being what it is, that's uh, I'd be watching myself. Um, uh, a buddy of mine up on the Ottawa River said his section of the river is starting to, you can sell, you can sell it starting to, to lift and break up and thaw. So uh, the rivers I'd be very, very careful on. The lakes, depending on the lake and where it is, you know, take your time. Uh, I wouldn't be driving on anything this time of year. Um, what happens with the ice this time of year is as if it doesn't get below minus six at nighttime, then the ice will not remain frozen. So the uh, being it's above minus six, uh, we're still gonna uh, the the earth st or the the yeah the earth is still gonna lose some of its coal. It's it's cold. So because it's gonna lose its cold, um, it's going to suck some of the cold out of the water. So that instead of that being thirty one degrees down there or 32, 34, you know, it's going to be 36, 37, 38 degrees. So the ice is going to start to deteriorate from below. You're not going to be able to tell by looking at it. Um, you won't be able, there'll be like f four to six inches of, of half decent ice. And then there'll be another six inches of what I consider called corn. And uh, that's no good for anything. So um, be very, very careful. I'd be even careful with a four-wheeler, even a snowmobile and stuff like that. Uh, I'd be walking, but I'd be in a, I'd be in a flotation suit or even, you know, I've seen some guys out there with uh, life jackets on. So I'd be real careful. But uh, some really, really good fishing at this time of year, though. Uh, we're going to try it. Uh, I'm going to try tomorrow probably if I get a chance. Um, to go up to Muskrat and, and go for some Lakers and apparently some awesome perch or something like that. So um, I'll let you know how that goes as well. But uh, like I say, this time of year, just from knowing how the ice forms and how it doesn't uh, and, you know, how much heating you get from the ground these days. Um, a few years back there, we were really pushing it, trying to get on this one lake. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Uh, 
it, yeah, it was it was kind of ridiculous uh, to try it, but you know we still did. So, um, but it's something that you're gonna have to be really, really careful about. So, um, anyhow, um, I, I guess maybe that's probably gonna be it for tonight. I think I'm gonna probably end this one quick. Um, I got some stuff out in the sugar shock to do. Like I say, I'm I'm really uh, really it's it's something i really really like to do in the in the uh in the springtime um and you know hopefully if this weather hangs in the way it does um we can keep doing it for a while uh, i sort of got to re resupply my maple syrups supply so but like i say give uh if you if you're looking for something to do this weekend go out check your local maple syrup producer go to wheelers go to fulton something like that um, just get online and, and uh, Google Lanark County or whatever area you're in, uh, whether you're in Ontario, Quebec, whatever. Uh, just you know, see if there's a maple syrup producer or in your area, um, and go out and spend the day out there checking it out. It's uh, you won't regret it. It's fun. Buy the products, support their local producers. Uh, forget about buying all this. Uh, you know process stuff off your off your shelf and in your stores and uh you know um this is uh this is what we used to do years and years and years ago um and you know you'll appreciate it your kids will appreciate it too so um i think what uh what i'm going to do right now is uh uh end the show and uh Thank you very much for listening this week. Um, next week's show is going to be really interesting. I've got a couple of very, very interesting ones coming up. Uh, I think you're really going to appreciate these, especially if you're looking at buying a rod. Oh, uh, well, that's the other thing I like to say as well, too. I've got going on right now a rod sale. If you're looking, uh, I've got up to 40 to 50% off a whole bunch of rods. I have a bunch of rods that uh, used rods uh, custom rods as well so you can get save up to a hundred dollars on a custom rod so if you're looking for something send me an email uh, info at mlsser.ca uh, shoot me a message on uh, on facebook at lanark lanark county confidential uh, go to the website go to reno viola outdoors you can, i think you can leave me a message there as well too if not um, you know, uh, do it through Facebook or whatever, but, uh, uh, I thank you for listening tonight. Uh, this is, uh, Michael Lynch Staunton signing off. Um, and we'll hope to see you next week.